controlled. The driver of this warrior isn't inside it, he's several metres away operating it via remote control. But this system isn't fully autonomous, it doesn't govern or control itself. It still needs to be operated by a person, even if that person is remote. It's just one of a number of new bits of kit being tested by the army in an experiment looking at a range of ways of using robotics and unmanned systems. We've used robots in the army for many years, but on a battlefield as you've seen today, um, we have not used them in the, in the scale and as low level in, for infantry tactics, certainly, as we have done uh, previously. So what could it mean? So it could mean that we um, can reduce the real risk to our soldiers consistently on a battlefield in a fighting, war fighting operation uh, and also perhaps in a counterinsurgency operation. Essentially, I guess you're saying it, it could save lives? It could absolutely save lives, yeah. yeah. Robot first will avoid us putting soldiers forward when we don't need to. So we could have trackers on an individual that tracks their heart rate, their respiratory rate, uh, and if they have stopped breathing or they uh, are on a high duress, then we could send a platform forward in order to rescue them. If they can crawl onto it, we can get them back. That would save four people going into the fight to try and drag that casualty out. So how does it work? It essentially puts into a little box that's in the standard driver's instrument panel, and let's say it's a toolkit. The driver can see what the cameras are seeing, basically has a joystick and all the buttons you'd normally have on a vehicle, he can select those and drive it as he would normally. He just happens to be 10 kilometres away. So how's it gone down with the troops testing it out? I'm very keen to see it out there, uh, especially for obviously keeping the personnel out of arm's reach in dangerous situations. With some people, if you sort of say robots first, some people might be concerned about uh, not using uh, soldiers on the front line. Soldiers will always be used on the front line because it's our interaction with human beings that is, is part, of, part of warfare, part of conflict resolution. So we'll always have to use humans, but it's a case of putting humans uh, into the environment when it's safe to do so. Uh, we want to create, if we like, an unfair battle where we can succeed in that battle, but without putting undue risk to our soldiers or, or our allied soldiers. How smart are these robots? How smart are these systems in that could, could they be in control completely um, without humans being involved? Uh, these could not. Uh, the ones you've seen today are absolutely remote control, so there's always a human in the loop controlling those uh, and according, operating according to human control. More than 200 personnel have been involved in testing out the technology in what the Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson has described as the biggest exercise of its kind. But if the Army wants to buy the kit they've tested out, it's not clear just how long it would take before this sort of technology would make it out onto the front line.